So a little while ago, we put out a video about how we live and sail on board with our two-year-old daughter, Charlie. There's heaps that we can share with families and families looking to live out on the water. This video is gonna be about the boat buying process, what we looked for in a boat, because all boats are different, um, the lifelines, the child netting, and how we have set the child netting up specifically, um, and what drew us particularly to this boat. So that's gonna be today's episode. If you enjoy this video, consider clicking the subscribe button and follow our adventures sailing around the world. Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminum catamaran and we're fixing her up as we sail around the world. Come along for the journey and click subscribe. Daddy? Mommy? Tony? Jamie James. So first we'll start with the boat buying process. So we knew that we wanted a catamaran and what we wanted to look for was Number one was access to water. So sugar scoops. Um, what I mean by access to water is how we get on and off the tender and how we get in and out of the water. So we knew that we were gonna be living on board with a little one and we wanted to know how we get her on and off the boat safely. So this particular one, we've got the sugar scoops here and there's not too much of a distance between the water. We can pull the tender right up to the back and hop on and off. Whereas sometimes boats that we are looking at, the back end was closed off and your access was from the side. Or when we lived on the monohull, our access, our access was midships and there was a ladder and one of us had to be in the tender and one of us had to go up the ladder first and we would pass her up and down. And that just made things a little bit more tricky for us. So when we're looking for our second boat, access to water was a really big one. And all boats have different access to waters. The one behind us has fully enclosed sugar scoops. So every boat has different. When we first hopped on a boat when looking, we paid attention to the back deck here and how we could enclose it to enclose a small family and how we can keep a little kid from getting out of the cockpit. So as we came onto this boat, the first thing we saw were these gates, which are amazing. And this is one of the things that we really, really love about this boat. So some of the boats we looked at we would walk in and we really liked the boat, but then it's just looking at, figuring out how you enclose it with child netting, how we would enclose a small child on there. And that's just one of the things that we high priority on our list to look at. Number one, access to water. Number two, how do we keep a kid from going down the sugar scoops? The other thing we looked at were the lifelines. So with the lifelines, one of the things that drew us to them is that they are completely solid and really sturdy. Um, they also are 1.2 meters high, which is higher than the average lifelines. Next to us, you can see that they just have the regular wires and they're a bit shorter. So when we saw these lifelines, that's one of the things that we absolutely loved. They're completely solid. And that at the bow up here, They turn in like this, and that we've got lifelines all across the bow as well. We've got the three wires down here, which made it really easy to put the child netting on. And then over here as well. And then we've got the gap in the middle and to pull moorings up on as well. We got really lucky. The previous owners were the ones who built her. They had two kids when they built her and they had safety in mind so that was one of the things that really drew us to this is that this boat was built with a family in mind 
they paid attention to safety features and that's what we were drawn to it's with just everything that they thought of we were just like that's on point that's on point we love that so um, everything we wanted they had thought of as well one of the other things that we've done for safety is we've added this child netting so the whole boat is child netted both sides and the front is child netted as well so we've taken the child netting we did all the top first and then everything is looped around with VB cord and half hitched there is no wire on the bottom of the netting um, we put a larger VB cord on the bottom loops it all through and then we've got the hoops here so the bottom rope goes from loop to loop and all the way down and it pulls it down and we got that really tight by wrapping the VB cord on the winch and basically just pulling it all tightly down so the this child netting is um, nice nice and tight and then we'll go up front so with the front being child netted how do we have ropes going through it so we normally have this bow sprit down at the front this is for the, the screecher um, that's on the bow sprit there and the way we have the bows, we don't need to take down the child netting at all. What we've done is we've cut a hole in the child netting. All these ends are burned. And then we took a rope and made a hole. So there's an endless furler on the bowsprit. The rope goes over here and is on these two. The way we take in and out this creature is by this hole here so we don't need to take down the rope with with that um, the child netting does get a little bit annoying sometimes particularly on our previous boat the monohull it would get in the way of the running back stays but all in all we're really happy to have the child netting this has saved so many toys so many Barbies and it just makes us feel more confident having her on board. One of the other things that drew us to this boat is that this is a custom made boat. So the owners had a say in the layout design and particular things on the boat. So inside here, there's a few features that are just wonderful. So over here, this is where we keep our sunscreen, but these shelves are actually, um, can take the weight of a human. And they did it because they made these into day beds up here. Currently we've got the foam for fiberglassing. Um, these were used as day beds so the kids could climb up here and go up to the day beds and on the other side. But these are also super sturdy and you can climb up to the day beds. Boundaries for Charlie while we're sailing. So Charlie is allowed inside our cockpit. So we have a sunken cockpit. So we've got stairs to go up to the edge here. So while we're sailing, myself or Sam, someone is out in the back cockpit and Charlie is allowed without her life jacket in the back cockpit as long as Sam or myself are in here. As soon as she steps up onto this step here, she needs to be wearing her life jacket. And then as soon as she's up on this area up here, she needs to be wearing her life jacket and she needs to be with one of us. So these are hard boundaries, they're hard lines. She knows them and basically safety is non-negotiable on this boat. Um, so those are just hard boundaries for us. 
She loves going up to the front and up to the trampolines while we're sailing. It's really fun to watch the waves and the waters and there's sometimes we get dolphins, there's a whole bunch of fish. She can go up there, she needs to be wearing her life jacket and she needs to be having myself or Sam with her. So she needs to have one of us. Winches and loads. She's not allowed to touch any of the winches while there's ropes on there. When there's ropes, it means that the sails are out, it means that there's loads on there. She is not allowed to touch the ropes, unwrap them or anything. That's a hard boundary. Um, she does love helping us pull the sails out. So we're pulling them out and um, she likes taking the tail end and helping us pull. And we think that is great because we would love for her to get into sailing and love it like we do. Um, but as far as touching them, when there's ropes in there, that's a no. In regards to electronics and the steering station in here, this is a no touch zone. Nothing is he in here should be touched. It's not to say it hasn't happened. We have been sailing once and Charlie has touched the autopilot and then the boat started going not on the path we wanted. And now she has the boundary of not touching the autopilot and she's not allowed to touch any of this equipment. The throttles, the wheel, anything like that. So this is all a no-go zone over here. The other subject that we can uh, speak to, being a young family, is nappies and what we do with nappies on board. So we use disposable nappies. I would say that our rubbish is about 75% nappies. Um, our rubbish builds up really fast having a wee one in nappies on board. Um, but where we put the rubbish is straight down into this hatch here, We're just in front of the mast. And this is our anchor locker. And so in here is where we keep our trash. So when the bin inside gets full, we bring it out here and this is sort of like our big rubbish bin. And this is where all of it stays until we bring it ashore and get rid of it properly. And in here, we've got a divide. This side is the anchor and chain. This side uh, has a bin on it. And this, is, this tub is where we put our rubbish bags. So we chose this to be our area for storing rubbish while we're out at sea for weeks, uh, months, um, is because this is self-draining. So if anything gets really yucky, um, we can just take a hose and spray this whole locker out and it self-drains. Um, so it's really easy cleanup. Um, we are very motivated to get Charlie potty trained because that also means that our rubbish amount and how frequently we have to get rid of rubbish off the boat will decrease. So hopefully all this information comes handy for other families. If you have any questions, please reach out. Please leave a comment below. Um, give this video a thumbs up and we will see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying our videos and would like to help support us making videos and content, consider becoming a Patreon. The link is in the description below. And don't forget to click those like and subscribe buttons, and we will see you all next week.